Hey guys, it's Carrie, the Invisible Goddess, and welcome to the Invisible Goddess podcast. It is podcast number eight, and today is Sunday, January 24th, 2021. Welcome, or welcome back. Um, does it irritate you guys when other YouTubers do that? Like, I'm a real YouTuber. Um, it it kind of irritates me. I'm pretty sure it's in, uh, in the How to Be a YouTuber handbook. <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't bothered to read. Um, anyway, back to the podcast. I have a lot of stuff to show you guys today. So I... I don't think I have any works in progress. I'm trying to think. I should have probably already had them. No, I don't have any works in progress. I do have a bunch of finished objects and a... I'm looking at it. A um, what's coming up next? So let's start with the finished objects, and I'm going to start with the crochet first. I made a bunch of stuff yesterday. Uh oh, I got Velcro attached to it. There we go. All right. So I told you guys that I was working on hats, or I showed you, um, and I was going to put a little a little clip on my boss's wife's hat. I did make the applique, but I sewed it right on. Honestly, if she really wanted to, she could take it off. <laughs> but anyway, um, hopefully it looks like a football to you guys. Does it? I'm pretty happy about that. Like, everything's done. I wove the ends. I'm going to show you how, how clean it is inside. So that's all the stitching on the inside. It looks really nice on the outside. So that's for my boss's wife. And then for my boss, um, he is allergic to cats. I do have two cats, so... I'm going to have to pick a sunny day and sit outside and just get every piece of cat hair that I can off of it because, I mean, I have cats. If you have cats, you know that their hair gets all over the place. Um, I'm not allergic, so not really a problem for me. It's more visual, um, like whether you can see the cat hair or not. and. I mean, you've seen my cats, they're calico, so there's a lot of white cat hair. Um, anyway, so let's, let's talk about this one. I think I had told you that I should have put white stripes, which is banned. <laughs> I should have put white stripes here, um, and that I was going to surface stitch them in our last podcast. I think that's what I said I was going to do. So I looked it up. Um, at first I looked up, uh, crochet football hat or football hat crochet, some, you know, those words. And I found some that didn't have the white stripes. So I thought, okay, well, other people are doing this. Like the, it can't be all that they forgot, like me. Um, so then I started Googling, why do some footballs have stripes and some don't? So what what I believe I remember, um, I mean, I did look it up. I just can't remember what I'm about to say is accurate or not. So look it up if you don't believe me. But I think what it is, is college football has those white stripes and NFL footballs do not. I think that's what that was. So, he has an NFL football hat rather than a college football hat. So, this is done. I did a, I'm sorry, I'm just going to sit here and pick the cat hair off. Um, I did a front post double crochet and then a regular double crochet. I don't know how to back post double crochet like so this is this is what what I do but I made the the band 
with front post double crochet and regular double crochet. I think his I did two, two rows of that to achieve this look. Hers I did three. Um, this is, I've said it enough times, this is Red Heart Super Saver in brown. Um, there was no ball band, so like I'm literally saying the color visually looks like brown. Um, I don't know what the actual name is. And then this white, I believe, was a Wintuk, W-I-N-T-U-K yarn, which is the same as the white on hers. Um, this is just a regular double crochet. Again, front post double crochet for the raised bit and then a regular double crochet because I don't know how to back post double crochet. Um, and you can see, so that's one row, that's two rows, and then that's three rows. So her band, trying to catch the sun. No, you can kind of see it there. Her band is thicker than his. I I kind of follow a general guide when I make hats, but most of the time I'm just sticking them on my head, seeing does it cover my ears yet or not. Um, and I, I think I just started the band earlier on hers. I don't know. Anyway, so those are the two hats that I finished. Double check and I don't have anything else in the in the bag. Let me actually stick these back in the bag. So what's up next? If you've been watching my daily videos, you will know that I had a little bit of a meltdown on Friday, Thursday or Friday, Thursday, I think earlier in the week, a couple days ago, I had a meltdown. And it was because I could not figure out how to use the searcher that I bought back in November. Uh, I thought it had it threaded correctly and I, I actually probably did because I know what the problem is now. Check the, the video that I have posted or will post about how to use this or how to thread this serger. It's a Brother 1034D. Um, and basically the, the thread riser, when, when I put it down, I'm not paying attention when I put it back up and the thread keeps getting wrapped around it, which as soon as you press the presser foot, no, the pedal, presser foot is actually on the machine itself, the pedal's on the ground. So as soon as you press the pedal, it basically locks it up because I am a dummy and let it get wrapped around where it's supposed to just go straight through, um, which will make more sense if you actually watch the video because I show you <laughs> how silly I am. Um, so yeah, it took maybe three hours of being on a video call with Emily. Shout out, Emily. Um, thank you. Uh, I know you, you say you didn't do much, but um, the moral support was wonderful. And your technical knowledge <laughs> of surgers in general was very helpful to me. Um, yeah, so Got it figured out. I have a video on how to thread it. It's a relatively inexpensive machine. Um, it's $250 about, I think that might've included tax. Like I'd have to look it up. Maybe I'll put something in, ooh, showing you, showing you what I made. Maybe I'll put something in here. All right, so let, let's show you in order of what I did. So, Miss Emily asked me to make something for her adorable kitty cat, Cole. I think I might have talked about this in a previous podcast. I actually got around to doing it. Um, so, her kitty cat likes to... Uh, has a heated bed. Likes to lay in the heated bed, but he has tummy troubles. So, he tends to throw up. Um... Yeah, I did talk about this because I said he likes to throw up. Nobody likes to throw up. Um, so she keeps uh, flannel 
uh, oh gosh, flannel pillowcases over this heated bed. And she asked me to make him a flannel pillowcase. Just, you know, so she has extra, don't have to, you know, wash and put it right back on. Um, plus our spoiled kitties need to have, our spoiled kitties need to have a variety just like we do, right? So I made a pillowcase. It might be a little hard to get everything in the frame, so I'll, I'll show you best I can. So this is the orange kitty cat fabric. It, it's looking very day glow uh, orange on the camera. Um, it's a more muted, like, peachy melon color in real life. Um, it's kind of funny because this is coming up the correct color. Pretty close, as is the white. Anyway, um, oh, I guess you can see, like this over here rather than in the shadow. So it, what you're seeing over here in the light is closer to the actual color. Anyway, um, so I made a pillowcase standard size pillowcase. I'm gonna kind of fold the center in so maybe I can get it. Yeah, that'll work. And you guys just saw how wide it is. So just made a standard sized pillowcase. <laughs> um, and I used the burrito method. This trim, you know, is flipped up. Like it's it's all attached. I mean, you wouldn't flip it up; you keep it flat. But the cool thing is, it's all finished on the inside. Uh, there's many videos on this. Maybe I'll make a video of my own. I use the Crafty Gemini's video. I kind of used her measurements. This white piece. Um, the fabric was like only this wide. That's about eight inches. And she said like 10 to 12 is what I should have used. So I extended this fabric because why like it's perfect use to, to use up the entire piece of fabric, not have to cut anything new. So I just kind of went with it. Um, this trim piece, her video said to use, uh, two inches. I did closer to, I did do two and a half because I kind of wanted it thicker. Um, so yeah. Focus. Focus. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with it. Um, making pillowcases. Probably going to be on my to-do list. I'll save that for the end and give you the plan on that. So I made that. That was the first serger project. And, you know, I went digging around in the scraps that she gave me and decided, well, I have everything next to me. Did I miss something? Oh, I did. It's because I was going to cut, uh, cut something off. So I went digging around in the scraps that she gave me and I just need to cut this. Like it, it is literally all done. I just haven't cut it and I don't have scissors next to me or I would do it. And I'm too lazy to get up and reposition the camera or reposition the camera after I get up. So anyway, went digging around in her scraps and I found this adorable, well, let me show you the back because it's easier to see it that way. This adorable, um, what are these, dinosaurs fabric. And I made a twisted turban headband. Again, I've already tied the inside. Like the, the seam is finished. And I've run everything through the surged edge 
and tied it in a knot. Like I literally just have to cut these off and, and everything is fine. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I made this turban headband and I'll, I'll put a picture in of me wearing it so you can kind of see. But there we go. That, that, like, that's how it, that's how it sits on your head. You can put the, the twisty part in the front or the back. Um, I used a pattern from So So English because uh, they had a little trick in that instead of going straight across, you kind of make a rainbow shape, a little arc, and it lays, uh, it lays nicer on your actual head when you're wearing it. So why did I pick this fabric, right? Actually, I'll leave you in suspense for just a minute. The scrap piece that I had for that was uh, probably, no, you know what? It wasn't the width of fabric because most of knit fabric is 60 inches, I think. Um, so this was about, God, what's 18 times? It, it was about 40 inches. Um, that pattern that I just showed you is, let's see, I used eight inches wide by 20 inches long, which left me, you know, a, another 20 inches and I didn't want to make two headbands. Thought about it, but I, I decided not to do that. So what I did with that other piece was make a scrunchie. And I did use the serger, I'm trying to see if you can see through. Yeah, you can see the light coming through. So I did use the serger on the seam that you can kind of see uh, the shadow of. So I used the serger all the way around the end and then I took it to the sewing machine and basically did a French seam. I'm calling it a French seam because I hid the serger seam, but you still see the top stitching. You see the top stitching? Go back and focus. Come on. Anyway, like, I top stitched it, so it's, you know, no, no raw edges. So now to why this is actually good. So that was what? Projects one, two, and three. Project number four, another shout out, Emily. So Emily, when I helped her straighten, I'm sorry, I need to situate this correctly. When I helped her straighten, she she gave me a bunch of clothes also that she had made. Uh, I've been wearing the hell out of her stretch pants that she gave me. Um, and I'm gonna hold this weird because it's got a uh, crisscross back. So pretend that, that I'm showing this better. Like, you know, when do I ever show anything all that well anyway? Anyway. So these straps go up, you can see, you know, the band and then, you know, the rest of the dress. Well, when she gave it to me, oh, and it's, it's got like a built-in lining uh, to the bust. I put it on, I can get it on, uh, that's what she said. Um, like it, it does fit me, but what, what you can't see down here is, um, how do I put this? 
I have a larger chest than she does. I think that's how we put that. So I have a larger chest than she does. And it was, it was too tight. <laughs> um, I did lose 30 pounds last year. I'm probably like, I'm trying to lose another 25 to 30 this year. But uh, even if my chest does get smaller, it's not getting that much smaller. Like it's, I've lost weight before and I don't lose it in, in, in my uh, chest. Which, I mean, good or bad, I, I just don't. So I wanted to get some use out of these dresses or I wanted somebody to get some use out of these dresses. So what I did was offer them to Kay. There's actually two dresses. I'm, I'm just showing you the dinosaur one first. So I offered it to Kay or offered them to Kay and she said she wanted the dinosaur one. So I said, okay, great. And then I thought, oh, I would wear the dress with no, like no finished edge on the bottom. Cause that the dress was completely finished with the exception of the, the edge on the bottom. Um, speaking of which, just in case you don't believe me, uh, previous Carrie made a video, which current Carrie will insert, or editing Carrie will insert here. So I'm not sure if you guys will believe what I just said. So this is past Carrie showing you that the, oh, I should probably hold it up a little bit more. Um, all right, so this is the dress that I just talked about on the podcast, which has not happened yet because this is past Carrie. So I'm showing you that the dress is all finished with the exception of the hem. So I'm gonna kind of figure out how to self bind the end and hopefully not screw it up. Um, Kay is pretty, sh I'm gonna say pretty short. She's probably taller than me, but she's, she's not a giant. So hopefully it shouldn't matter if I take a little bit of the length off. Okay, did it turn out? Do you believe me? Okay, <laughs> so um, look at that. I got a finished edge now. Might not look perfect, but I kind of folded it up and then I folded the raw edge. Okay, so this, this is the inside. So I folded the finish or the, the nice side of the fabric over and then pinched it. So I pinched it like, I pinched it there and then ran the serger over it. Like, I'm not a quilter, but if I were a quilter, I'd call, kind of call that like self binding. Anyway, so I made a finished edge for the dress. Uh, I did, I mean, it looks like I took it up like four inches. K isn't all that tall. I kind of hung it over my neck after I was done. Uh, I, being an old lady, I probably wouldn't wear it that short. Um, but she's 15. <laughs> Um, I don't think she's all that much taller than me and she's not as big as me around. So, um, I think it'll be fine for her. It's, it's, I'm sure she's got stuff as short or shorter. So anyway, so I finished the dress off finished cause I finished the bottom. It was already done. Like not trying to steal Emily's credit there. Um, one more. So what I did this morning, if you go back to my UFO video, I talked about, 
I called them traveler scarves. I have since found out that's not what Whitney called them. I did use her video originally. Um, and if I bother to watch it again this morning, because what I'm about to show you, I actually did this morning. Um, it might have been easier if I had actually rewatched the video, but I didn't. And I had to like rip out an entire scene twice. And I almost did it the same mistake for a third time. And then I, I got smart. Um, so, okay. So what's up with the traveler scarf is it is... It has, you put a zipper in it. So like when you, when you wear it and I don't, I don't look good in scarves. So so you, you put your, and I'm covering up, covering up the thing. So I am trying you guys. So you put your scarf on. I'm just going to hold it up so maybe you can hear me. So you, you put your scarf on and if you want to be like hands free and still carry like your, your license, you know, back when we could go out, maybe you want to put your license in your phone and maybe even a little change purse. Then Do it this way so I can actually show you. You just unzip the zipper. <laughs> you just unzip the zipper. Put your stuff in there. Go back up. Again, I'm I'm gonna put this to the side, and then. Nobody knows, like they, they can't pickpocket you if, if it's like physically on you, not in your purse, like you, you're not carrying anything. You're not, you're not a target. So that was our last finished object for today. Again, with the vanity, let me fix my hair. I... Let's talk about this for a little bit. So I have that in my UFO pile and remaking it this morning. Granted, I did make it harder on myself by not rewatching the video, but they're a pain in the butt to make. And like, it, it's not a product that I want to offer. But I have all this fabric cut. So yeah, so let's talk about that UFO pile. Um, when I pulled that fabric out this morning, I definitely, you know, had, had the intention of making what I made, but it also reminded me of why that project pile became a UFO pile. And that's like, it was irritating to make that scarf. I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, again, part of that is because I thought I remembered how to do it and I didn't. Um, so I have to decide if I'm going to actually make those scarves or not. Um, I could probably still get shirts made from that fat like get shirts me I could probably make shirts from that fabric with how I cut it because they're just big rectangles so I probably could do that I originally bought that fabric yeah I originally bought that fabric to make um, Renaissance clothing like uh, chemises and shirts but I have plenty of those and I don't wear all those colors um, so yeah I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that 
as it is, I'll probably end up making the scarves. I just have to rewatch the video, but like this, I'm giving you guys my thought process there. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So that will be a, you know, that's a future project. Um, and then the other future project I have right next to me. So remember when I said I offered Kay two different dresses and she picked the dinosaur one? The other dress, again, it's, I gotta get the thing right because it crisscrosses. That's the side. So we're gonna call this the front. So Emily made another dress. It's, it's the same size. My boobs are too big, so I can't wear it. I offered K both of them. She picked the dinosaurs. And then I offered G um, the llama dress, which isn't that adorable? Um, and she said yes. <laughs> so if you guys didn't believe me before, which I mean, I'm sure you did, but you can see put it this way you can see the the bot the bottom edge isn't finished and i don't think there's enough scraps actually i don't think it comes um out of focus um i don't think there's any i haven't seen any scraps of this she might have it in her um uh, fabric stash emily do you have it in your fabric stash <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, I am probably going to turn this one up also, and uh, G is 18, going on 19 in three months. Um, so I, I might just turn hers up by like that much. Because again, I, I put it over, I mean, I, I originally put it on and it's like knee length on me. Um, so... G is taller than me, but not, I mean, it's not like they're either of them are giants. So we'll think about how to finish the edge on this. Maybe there, maybe there's a gray fabric scrap that I could do that with color blocking. I think it's called this one. Naughty Emily. Um, <laughs> I say that like I'm an expert. <laughs> no. Um, thank you, Emily. I appreciate these. Um, so this is three layers of three layers of fabric because it's this fabric and then this gray fabric and then on the other side of the gray fabric is the outside fabric again. So it's three layers of fabric and the gathering, the gathering on it, she missed a couple spots. Um, and like looking at the construction, I, I see why it's cause it's, it was too thick. And I just have my finger through one of them. That's a good one to show you. You see how this little gather it didn't get caught in the seam. So I need to decide whether I'm unpicking just that area or if I'm hand sewing it or if I'm completely taking the skirt off, regathering it and then serging it. And considering that Emily's been serging a whole lot longer than I have because I've been doing it for less than 24 hours at this point, I'm probably going to unpick just that area and then hand sew. Well, I hate hand sewing. Maybe I'll... You know what? I am going to hand... I'm going to undo just that area. I'm going to hand tack this in place and then I'm going to research the entire thing because it's basically basted 
that way so I'll be sure to catch everything might not look good and I'm probably going to um, make it shorter Let's see there's another one um, I don't know if you can actually see right there that's probably also going to make it shorter so definitely can't put that much of an edge on this one um, and then there there's the fact that both of these girls are slender um, I would be surprised if either of them are larger than a four um, uh, you know G is slender K she's also slender but she's muscular um, so I have to take that into account too and there's the fact that I am a very cootie phobic and I haven't been like physically over to their house since the middle of October I mean I have gone to their house since October I haven't been in their house since October um, and that was only to to help G register for school um, so yeah <laughs> Uh, I'm probably going to have to take in the side seams, which I mean that literally would be just run a new seam all the way down like in my head that's what would make sense but like how do I measure them they don't have pins <laughs> um, you know what I could probably video call with their mom and um, figure it out that way like she's she, you know what she has my uh, fabric she has my fabric markers because I her younger girls were supposed to draw on those face masks for their teachers, which they, they didn't do, which I'm not upset about. <laughs> like, I gave them cheap fabric uh, to do that, uh, and I made them cut it out themselves. So I'm, I'm not too much time into that. Um, I, I just traced the, what they needed to cut out. Anyway, uh, maybe I can have them put it, have the girls put it on have somebody else in the house like squeeze on the sides and then uh, Jay can just cousin Jay can just mark where I would need to sew like it's on the inside nobody's gonna see it so may maybe we could do that um, so yeah fixing this uh, I can't believe I'm just committing to that but I did tell these girls that that I would bring it to them next time I see them or next time I come I drop stuff off to their house I would bring it um, so yeah that's where we are uh, so yeah that's where we are it's about 2 30 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon I already had to rethread the serger this morning because I made a stupid error and let it get looped around um, the thread guide or whatever it's called um, that holds the thread up um, so I'm I'm gonna go play like I can't wait to it's probably gonna be the same projects but I can't wait to to show you guys what I got going on for next week um, so yeah uh, until then peace out homies <laughs>